how to create abstract patterns with the Flare tool in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I want to talk about how you make some uh, random uh, vector patterns in Adobe Illustrator using the Flare tool. So this is just a 1920 by 1080 um, artboard that I have and I'm in RGB mode. And I'm just going to fill the space here with something um, really dark. I'm actually going to just do RGB black. Um, and then I'm going to come over here and grab my flare tool, which is underneath the rectangle tool. Typically, that's where you find it. And this is um, there's a lot of settings on on these. So um, it's not really that important that you get the right settings, but just know that it will change the outcome uh, based on what you do. So, you know, play with it and find something that you like. If I click, it's going to make something similar to what I just made, which has all these different settings, right? So your diameter is going to be how big these circles are. And then opacity changes how much is seen, you know, behind it. And then there's the brightness, which is going to increase this center part here. Um, number of rays. So you could do a ton of rays or you could do um, very few and then you could change up the length and you can do the fuzziness and all this stuff. So um, I don't I don't really think it's all that important to to get this right because there isn't really a right. Um, but I'm just going to kind of throw something together until I, I like what I see. How about that? Um, do number of paths. We're just going to do a whole bunch for fun. There, I'm basically making planets. <laughs> That's a lot. So normally I wouldn't do this many, but heck, let's just see what happens and um, maybe I like it. So, all right. So the next thing you want to do after you have this, um, you might rotate it more like this, but it's not necessary. Let's just see what it looks like when it's like this. Again, a lot of this is very random, so it's a lot of trial and error. But once you have your um, flare shape made, just go to Effect and uh, Distort and Transform. Click Transform, hit Preview. Um, maybe a good place to start is 35 copies and you can do an angle of 10 degrees and then just see what that looks like. You're usually gonna get some sort of bloom thing like this. Let me just hit OK so you can kind of take a look at that up close. It is just a lot of circles on top of a lot of circles. Um, I mean, really colorful too. So anyway, um, that's just kind of a quick setting on that. If you don't like that, which I'm not really fond on this of this, let's go to transform and then hit preview again and then change some settings to see if we can get something that we really like. Um, this is going to be scale. So your scale is going to be, um, basically making it look like it's kind of going in on itself or coming out, um, in a spiral sort of look. Um, so there's that, that kind of gives like an S shape, as you can see, um, the vertical will just make that scale this way as well. Um, so you can see maybe an even more defined S shape out of that, right? And then there's the, let's go back to a hundred on those. And then this is going to be your move, which just pushes the I, the objects out in a horizontal or vertical fashion. Um, again, since it's random, it's not terribly important that you know exactly which way it's going because there's just so much here. Uh, my, my advice is just to try stuff in here until you get something that looks really cool. Um, and then you can, you can mess around with reflecting these things. Uh, reflecting both usually gets an interesting look. Reflecting one usually gets a funky look, but you know, that might look really cool in a background just running across, you know, like that. I don't know. Depends on what you're after, right? Um, just backing up a few steps here. Let me also show you what happens if you align to a different spot of, on the artwork. You're gonna get it to look, you know, different this way just because um, it's going to rotate from a different starting point. So, I mean, that one probably looks the best. What if you do random? What does that look like? Oh, that's kind of cool. Random is random. And <laughs> so you get some interesting looks there. Like it might be cool just to finish this out entirely and make a really big 
um, full circle or something like that. Maybe we up the the angle a little bit too. You know, it's whatever, right? You can do all sorts of stuff with it. Um, and then one of the things that is important to know is that this is these flares are transparent, and so um, it's whatever you do to the background color, it's going to change the color of your art because um, all of that's going to bleed through basically. Um, as you can see, that really changed the the different the difference here in the color that you see in the flare if I make a different colored background. So I like darker backgrounds a lot of time because it allows more of the color to show. Um, but also if you want to color this, that can be kind of difficult unless you expand it out. And then you've got lots of different pieces. So my recommendation is just to leave it as a, as the flare and uh, come up here to edit, go edit colors, recolor artwork. And then you can click on this uh, color reduction option and it will bring up this menu and you can limit it to a library. And so say you want to just do foods. Let's just see what fruit looks like and recolor the artwork. So there you go. If I don't recolor it, it looks like that. Recolor it, looks like this. And you can assign all of these individually if you want to, um, but that's like a nice way to kind of get a quick change in color um, is to use one of your presets, or you can come over here and click on some of these color groups that you either have already or that you could um, make out of your own colors. Uh, let's just see what brights look like. Brights, boom. What about grays? What do those look like? See? Gray's kind of cool because then later on you could make it look like whatever you want. Um, or you could change the transparency to like 10% and see what that does. That's too too low, maybe 50. You know, something like that if you want to make a more subtle background. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, once you've got it, you can always, you know, rotate this image so that you get a different looking um, transformation. Uh, as you can see, it just changes the way that looks every time I do something, or you can flatten this out and that will give you a different look. Um, and as you can see that every time I make a change here, it, it's a slightly different looking pattern. See, that's kind of cool on the inside here. Um, and then you can always come back into your transform here and Try something else. Let's just go back to that setting and see what that does. Oh, that's kind of cool. I dig that pattern. It's got a lot of cross action going on there. Um, maybe you take that, double click on it again, give it a little bit of uh, scale here horizontally, maybe a little bit on the vertical. And maybe we add a few more copies of it. Kind of flesh it out. And then you want to like, you know, you can always put this inside of a clipping mask. I just made a copy of the background. And I'm selecting both elements here and clip, make clipping mask just so it fits on here. But that's kind of cool. This is just me toying around with all sorts of different settings. Okay. Uh, initial settings from... You know, the first time you click on the flare tool, changing these up, changing the angle, uh, that would be the direction here, uh, to changing the color, to changing the color of the flare, um, to the angles, all of that. And each one of these is just different looking, right? So this is this is how you make something random, um, but that looks kind of cool and that you can use like as a background object or, you know, something like this you could even use as an icon because um, it kind of looks like a camera lens to me, so... But I mean, here's this one, which looks really cool. Very uh, angle, angular looking, sharp looking. This one's more round. Um, this one was kind of angled, but like had like very bright gold colors, almost dragony, feathery or something like that. Um, you know, this one's sort of the, the camera lens. And then I just tried the camera lens look with different colors. And as you can see, the lighter the color, the less of the flare you're going to see because that transparency really... Um, makes a difference. And then this was the same object. These are the exact same, except that I shrunk this one down, right? So just going like this, you get basically that shape. 
Um, this one, I can't remember if I inverted or I just created more um, more angles or something like that. I, I really don't remember. Again, it's all very random, so you just kind of mess with something until it works. This one, I did some scaling, so it kind of looks like you're flying through a field of these like glowing orbs, you know? Like maybe you got your glasses off and you're flying through a star field. <laughs> that's what it would look like to me. But that's basically how you do it, guys. It's very simple, and yet there's all sorts of possibilities you can come up with, and you can get really creative with this and just toy with things to see what you like. So leave a comment down below, ask any questions you have. Let me know what you thought of this. Like, subscribe, and share, and do all that. And I will see you guys in the next video.